Hey guys, this is Chaplain Bo Willette out here in the desert and hope you guys are well and at least just enjoying the day and that you have, just uh, knowing that, hey, you have a, a new day. Uh, one of the scriptures that I always kind of quote to myself is, uh, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it, um, that there is a lot to be glad in this day. Uh, just to be alive and to know and to be known. So today I'm going to go through James chapter 5, verse 16. This is another one of my favorite kind of go-to passages just for me, just to kind of work on bow kind of thing. And we're all needing to kind of tinker with ourselves sometimes. And uh, this gives me a good kind of pattern of what I need to do. Um and what kind of is really um, maybe uh, the right kind of way to live. And it's one that is a little different than uh, kind of our world thinks. Sometimes we think, uh, you know, to be successful, we just have to be the most powerful. And um, But, you know, life uh, success isn't really based on being the most powerful, right? We don't just get into a relationship and force someone to love us and, and, you know, use our power to force them to love us. That wouldn't be good. We would call that being coercive, um, you know, coercing someone to like like you. Uh, but there's another way to do things. And so I'm going to look at James chapter 5, verse 16, that I find pretty cool on a personal level. So it says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. So we all want results. That's why we hit the gym. That's why we do what we do is because we want results. And in my life with God, I want results as well. I want to have a meaningful life with God. I, I want it to ha have an, an effect. I want it to be effectual. Um, again, I don't know anybody who would you know, do anything really of any meaning, working out, being successful in a job, without really wanting a, a factual um, um, results. You want it to have an effect, um, your hard work. And this is how it comes uh, even in our spiritual life with God. We want to be diligent. We want to be intentional. Not sure how intentional you have been lately in your spiritual life, but being intentional about your spiritual life is important, if not more important, than being intentional in your money or in other things, your relational life. So this is telling us that. Say, hey, you want to have results? Well, let's start here. Confess. Man, that is something that really hits a blow to me as a man. Uh, you know, it kind of hits the pride uh, a bit. Confess your sins. Sins are areas that we... Um, stumble in, things that God says not to do, we do. That is considered a sin. Sin is also defined very broadly as missing the mark, the mark of God. And so it's just like when we shoot at the net and we miss the net, we, in a sense, sin. We miss the, the uh, desired result. And God has a desired result for us to walk in. Um, and we all remember some of the commandments. Thou shalt not uh, commit adultery. Thou shalt not murder. Uh, thou shalt not steal. Those kind of ideas. God has a way for us to, uh, a desire for us, uh, uh, a law for us to walk in. But there's many times where we stumble out of those things. We, we break them. We fall. And so notice the, the way to have great, wonderful results starts off with confession. And confession means to say the same thing about something that God does. So it's calling it for what it is. It's just being really clear, uh, you know, not kind of candy coating or whatever that idea is, you know, covering up. But it's saying, hey, this is what it is. You know, this is, this is how God sees it. He sees it as sin. It is sin. And I'm just going to confess that. That's, it is sin, what I did. It wasn't right. It wasn't the right thing to do. And notice, to have good results, we have to kind of know the error that we're in. You know, in order to get a math problem right, you have to kind of go back to the beginning where you did the math wrong. 
And uh, if you don't go back to where you got that problem wrong, uh, the, you know, the beginning of where you got it wrong, you're never going to get it right. You got to kind of look at it and be honest. Hey, I got that problem wrong because I missed this area. And so we have to be able to show a little vulnerability in our life. And this is tough for a lot of us. But uh, sometimes in our world, we don't get places by showing too much weakness. Usually it's by showing a lot of strength. But it's funny, in our walk with God, God is the strong one. He's the ultimate mighty one. We're the ones that are the ones made out of dust, you know, the ones that are weak, uh, frail, you know. And in order to have results with God, we need to be honest with God. You know, honesty is important. I would say, how important do you think honesty is uh, in your life? You know, do you think uh, uh, you would put a, uh, a good value on honesty? And I hope you would. I mean, if you go to a doctor, would you want the doctor to be honest? Uh, would you want your spouse or your girlfriend or, you know, the one you're in relationship with to be honest? Um, yeah, honesty is important. Well, it is in our walk with God um, just as much, you know, to confess our sins. So to have good results, we got to kind of know the problem. We got to kind of know, hey, where am I Where am I off? And we have to be able to com- say that, you know, hey, God, you know, and, and, you know, we realize God knows things. We realize God knows what it is that we're weak in. But notice in a relationship, it's good to confess it. And why, you might say. You might say, well, Bo, if someone, if my wife already knows my, my the, you know, how I am, then why would I share it? Why would I say it out loud? Well, because it says something. It says that you need help. And... You know, sometimes when you confess that you need help, then you could get that help and then it could it could produce those wonderful results that you want. It's just like in weightlifting, you know, in order to build those muscles, you need to use bigger weight. And a lot of times when you're using a heavy weight and a low rep count, you need someone to guide you, uh, maybe someone even to assist you in that bench press that you're doing. And it's important that they're assisting you because maybe they, you know, they're you they going to be able to just help you a titch to get that weight up. But that weight is important because it's stressing those muscles to the max, so to speak. So you're getting, you know, the ultimate uh, blood gorged in that area, you know. But if you never said to someone, hey, I need a spot or I need someone to help me with this, then you'll never maybe reach that maximum potential of building and uh, those muscles. So... You know, in life, too, we need to have helpers come alongside of us to really get maximum, you know, benefit, uh, to be able to move forward, to get benefit, greater results. Um, And so just admission that, hey, I need some help in this area, you know, is really important. And, of course, in our walk with God, it's super awesome. Now, notice it says confess your sins to each other. So not just to God, but to each other. You know, find someone that you, you can talk to. Find someone that you can confess. You know, confession also has a wonderful uh, result because it's getting something um, out that has been in. And sometimes when things are in for too long, it can kind of bottle you up and bottle up your mind and your heart. You know, all the things that kind of gives you a lot of anxiety and stuff like that. But when you're able to talk to someone, especially us men, you know, getting together and saying, hey, man, I struggle with this. I struggle with that. And, you know, hey, I've struggled with all things, man. There ain't nothing anybody's going to say to me that I'm going to go like, what? That's crazy, you know, because most things we all struggle with are very, they're very similar. The Bible even says that, by the way. It says that everything that we struggle with is kind of common. So notice that it says we pray for one another that we may be healed, that there could be a healing, there could be wonderful results, right, of, uh, of uh, pr- producing something beneficial as we come together and help one another out. It says the earnest prayer of a righteous person. Who is that righteous person? Well, it's the one who confesses their sins to each other. That's the righteous person. So when we think righteous, sometimes we think of a person who doesn't have any problems. But that's not what this scripture says. It's saying the earnest prayer of a righteous person, someone who's confessing their sins to each other, you know, to one another, and praying for one another. 
uh, helping one another out, right? Moving someone along, giving them uh, help and each other, uh, you know, um, looking to one another for, um, for help to become everything you guys can be, um, that kind of idea. Um, but it says that kind of person is the righteous person and they have great power and produce amazing results. And it's a, I tell you, man, it's awesome to have a partner in life, to be able to work with them and pray with them and, and uh, be, uh, you know, even confess your faults. I mean, s my wife confesses her faults to me. Um, she knows my faults, but I confess them to her anyway. And, you know, and just say, hey, I, I could really use you to help me and just be there for me and pray for me and those kind of things. But it's great. Um, encourage each other to be with other other people as well that can encourage us in good directions. Um, but you can see how sometimes when we're vulnerable most, that's when we can really start allowing people in to help us to really grow. Um, you know, the opposite of this is, you know, if you think about it, if you ever wonder, oh, man, okay, I want to get some more clarity here. Just do the opposite of this. Don't confess your sins to each other and don't pray for each other. Uh, you know, what is the result of not confessing any of your sins? What's the result of not praying for each other? You know, what is it? Well, then you become, right? You become someone who hides everything. You become maybe very um, self-absorbed, right? Maybe you don't see you, the blind spots that you have in your life, you know. Uh, maybe you avoid them. Uh, you just deny them. You know, have you ever heard or seen someone who just denied something that's really obvious? Yeah, that's the person who doesn't want to confess. They're afraid that through confession it might show a weakness, and that weakness is not good. Um, their whole life is contingent on them being um, able to, um, you know, not have any weakness, but to be strong. Um, but you know what? Again, in the eyes of God, we're all weak. We all need to come to him as weak. He is the strong one. He is the one who has the ability to help us and heal us and uh, to fix us um, from all of our, our little defects that we have within us as human beings. So it's a very cool passage. shows us a little vulnerability. shows us how to work with one another, pray for one another. And that really a righteous person is someone who is someone who really has a good assessment of his own life, his own... Uh, in, in a sense, who he really is, you know, that he is a person who's in need and that it's okay to show that. And so, hey, if you need any help, you reach out. That's what you do. You reach out and nothing's wrong with that. We all do it. We all need one another. So this passage certainly reminds me of those things. And that's why it's one of my favorite. So you guys take care, okay? Um, you guys know how to get a hold of me if you need anything. Okay, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.